If you saw the past reviews on this channel about the Sonic games, you will have seen that Sega and Nintendo had quite the console war. Looking at that, not to mention the PlayStation coming out in Japan in late 1994, perhaps that was it for the Super Nintendo. Nintendo and even Mario may have fallen from their throne in the gaming industry, until... Look at that! 3D sprites! Cool music! Is this the next generation of consoles at the time? Well, there was certainly nothing like this at the time, and the familiar character of Donkey Kong got a new artistic design. Let's look back at what was quite possibly a competitor to Sonic, a classic Super Nintendo game that was the result of a Nintendo Rare partnership, a game that was released a little over 25 years ago, Donkey Kong Country. The story is much more simplistic than the manual makes it out to be. It is a stormy night, and Donkey Kong's horde of bananas has to be guarded. So Donkey Kong's nephew Diddy Kong is assigned to guard duty as part of his hero training. But the reptile-like gremlins who serve King K. Rool knock out the little ape, seal him inside a barrel, and steal all the bananas. Donkey Kong, who had failed to relieve his nephew of his guard duty, follows a trail of bananas accidentally left behind by the gremlins' banana heist in order to rescue Diddy and retrieve his banana horde. It's very simple stuff, akin to the Mario games at the time, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, it's presented in a somewhat better fashion in other releases of the game, but we'll come back to that. This means that the game is more about the gameplay of platforming, exploration, and jumping around and going through one level after another. Before you actually start playing, it is hard not to notice the graphics that wowed many people back in 994, but are they impressive today? Well, to an extent, Yes. First of all, all the character models are three-dimensional computer models that were created in a silicon graphics computer and were changed from what they looked like in the manual slash computer to a more usable format for the Super Nintendo. While it seems like the graphics are focused more on realism, the characters' animations radiate with credible cartoony charm, including the animations that show enemies getting hurt. Some of the details, including weather effects, are nice, and some of the level's lighting changes either for gameplay purposes or for just simply creating an atmosphere, such as the time of day changing. The environments also don't look too bad, and the camera scrolls through them almost effortlessly. It is easy to criticise much of the details and textures in contrast to the 3D games that were becoming popular at the time, and still are. And subjectively speaking, the colour scheme in the game could have been somewhat more vibrant. But the game is still generally pleasant to look at today, and only got at least slightly better in later games. But that's for another time. The music is also extremely good. Mostly composed by David Wise, with contributions by Evelyn Fisher and Robin Beanland, the soundtrack is full of variety and atmosphere, and sets the tone for the varied levels and moments present. The mixture of natural environmental sounds, nice melodies, and accompanying percussion is effective. The DK Jungle Swing track in the first level is certainly iconic. That aquatic ambience can be quite possibly considered perfection in backing a water level. There's Fear Factory, Life in the Mind, and of course the title theme. Some of the tunes are unclear or muddled or just simply mediocre when trying to mix ambience with a catchy or fun melody, but the soundtrack is still generally good and memorable. The sound effects are also good, including that of the ape sounds that Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong make. Get used to the sounds they do make, because they will be moving, jumping, rolling, riding animals, and even getting hurt as you control them through this side-scrolling adventure. Much like the Mario games, it is about going through one level after another, looking for secrets, and getting rid of or avoiding enemies. Plus there are obstacles and bottomless pits. The ecosystems that are the levels range from jungles, to caves, to mines, and even factories, and they generally have their own set of individual challenges. The early levels are very easy, and gradually set you up for the challenges that lie ahead. For example, an early level will see you move Donkey and Diddy through a series of barrel cannons over a large bottomless pit, and such a challenge is replicated throughout the game with a steadily increasing difficulty curve. The trails of bananas, as well as K-O-N-G, con letters will help you get extra balloons, or lives. Just collect 100 bananas or all 4 letters, which is optional. What is also optional is collecting animal tokens. Collect 3 of a kind and you play a bonus level as a specific animal, which can result in your life counter increasing exponentially. Speaking of 
the animals, they are buddies of the two apes that are found in some of the levels, and they can be very helpful when navigating tricky platforming segments or looking for secrets. For example, Rambi the Rhino's horn can uncover hidden entrances in the walls. But, do these animal buddies or almost absurdly huge number of lives make the game easy? Well, the difficulty of Donkey Kong Country is somewhat hard to pinpoint, and partially depends on your playing style or potential want to rush through the game. First of all, when Donkey Kong rescues Diddy Kong from the barrel he was sealed in, the smaller ape adds as an additional hit point. Basically, don't get hurt twice, or fall into a bottomless pit, unless you want to lose a life. The interesting thing is that while Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong share the same controls and abilities of running, jumping, rolling, and holding slash holding barrels, they have a few noticeable differences. Donkey Kong can perform a slam attack, is stronger against really tough enemies, and holds barrels above his head, while Diddy is smaller, faster, and can jump higher, but instead holds barrels in front of him. For tight squeezes and tricky jumps, you'll want to use Diddy, but for a series of muscular enemies blocking the way, Donkey makes quick work of them. While the level design is good enough to accommodate this, it mostly feels like Diddy is the better con to use, which makes tactics such as using Donkey Kong first so you don't lose Diddy somewhat questionable and unbalanced as a gameplay mechanic. For the most part, you should be able to cruise through most of the levels using whatever con you have at the time, but there are at least a few frustrating aspects or moments. There are times when the camera or even weather effects or lighting won't show you a platform you're about to land on or an enemy barely visible on the side of the screen. Some of the levels definitely require quick reaction times, including the notable minecart levels. And sometimes the hitboxes are annoying, where you're sure in your head you pressed the button at the right time or jumped on an enemy from the right angle. Well, it's quite possibly the hardest aspect of the game are looking for the bonus levels. The aforementioned secrets. More often than not, these bonus levels are uncovered through hidden entrances in walls or out of reach barrel cannons, so you sometimes have to jump in unconventional directions or hold barrels in front of just about every wall. But there are a number of bonus entrances that are mostly not possible to find without a guide, including a bonus within a bonus. Surely a trail of bananas that adds us a subtle hint rather than the urge to jump, much like the coins in the Mario games, but Tatoya and Super Mario Maker 2 says that. Wouldn't have been too much to ask. Anyway, the bonus levels are mostly fun and involve precise jumping or matching objects letters and so on, making them more than just an excuse to increase your life counter. Plus, they barely punish you for doing them wrong. Still, if you genuinely neglect to look for bonuses, with some levels only having one bonus or no bonuses at all, and just simply go from the beginning to the end of each level while trying not to die, you will find that the game is somewhat short and lacking in challenge, even in the later sections. Not to mention, the boss fights are stupidly easy. The mention of bonuses also brings us on to the other releases of the game. There's no real reward beyond completionism for finding all the bonus levels, but this has changed somewhat in the Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance versions, the latter of which I haven't played. They essentially feature at least one additional level and bonus content such as minigames. Plus, the story is presented differently with basic stills and cutscenes. There are changes, including small ones such as being able to save in any area, no need for a life resetting save point there, to big ones such as mostly lower quality graphics and sound. While color saturation decreased resolution and lower sound fidelity are hard to look past, the games look and sound as good as they can for handheld releases, despite being mostly inferior to the Super Nintendo version's production values. The production values alone also make it easy to describe Donkey Kong Country as almost nothing more than a graphics over gameplay product. Is that true? Is it simply a prettier looking Mario or Sonic game? While it's a pretty looking and sounding game, the gameplay is there. It is a simple yet fun twist on the familiar 2D side-scroller gameplay. It can be quite fun to play around with all the different barrels animal buddies, and navigating the world with little more than simple, precise, and even quick button inputs. While the game does feel a bit too short and easy outside looking for bonuses, it is a journey that is more important than the destination, and is suitably addictive. It is somewhat dated, potentially superficial, and feels retrospectively like a first game of the series with room for improvement. That's for another time. But it is hard to put down the controller even today when playing Donkey Kong Country. The Virtual Console, SNES Mini, and quite possibly the handheld releases are the best way to play this mostly classic and nostalgic game today, if you haven't already.